Welcome to the ESS Midwatch. My name is Rafael Guzman. I'm Brandon Taylor. And I'm Dick Tapia. coming hey thanks uh so what boats have you been on actually uh, when did you first join all right so i first joined the navy <laughs> october of 1999 which is funny because when i tell you know young sailors that i start with 19 and they're like damn you're old i'm like listen i ain't got time for that but uh no i joined in october 1999 uh which this uh october will be finally ending a 25 year <laughs> career which has been pretty crazy um i did serve two boats because uh uh, I'm a lame corpsman, and we don't start off in submarine service, um, but uh, joined the submarine force in 2010, 2009. I uh, served on the USS Santa Fe and the USS Maryland Gold. Why was it you initially joined the Navy? Initially joined the Navy because uh, I had no real plans in life. It's <laughs> um, fair. Yeah. I mean, okay. Uh, in high school, I wanted to be a musician, so I tried to set up a couple auditions with some schools. My grandmother passed away, and I missed those auditions, and me being petty was like, well, screw you. I'm going to go look at the recru recruiting office, and they snagged me up quick. So uh, I was actually 17 when I first signed everything off um, to join the Navy. Um, yeah, I did my, my entrance physical in December of 1998 mm -hmm. uh, prior to turning 18 and uh, had to get my parents' permission. Parent waivers. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And... Uh, I'm not going to lie. It took me a while to graduate high school. I was not uh, the most astute student, meaning I just didn't go. Uh, I fair. don't keep that, yeah. keep that a secret from anybody. <laughs> I technically didn't graduate until uh, October of 1999, <laughs> though my diploma still says June. So that's fine. I'm okay so, with that. Oh, uh, Hey, it's all on paper for it's June, right. right? It's on paper for <laughs> June 6, 1999. That's all that matters. So how fast did your parents sign that at 17? There was a little bit of hesitation. Um... So at that point, my mom wasn't around. So we, it was just my dad and uh, my brother and sisters. So he, he was a little apprehensive at first. And then he's like, well, at least it's not the Marine Corps and signed it off anyway. <laughs> also understandable. <laughs> yeah. Uh, where are you from again? <clears throat> so originally from Southern California, uh, <clears throat> born in San Bernardino, but I've lived in various locations. Uh, finally, before I uh, left home, we, we kind of settled in Riverside and Myrtle Valley. Uh, my mom still lives there. My brother lives there. Um, the rest of my family still lives in California in some capacity with my youngest sister in the Army in Fort Irwin. So, you know, they've stayed there. I've not. Yeah. Born mm -hmm. in Riverside. Mm-hmm. Um, Ontario. Montclair, 25 years. Yeah. But I've lived in Upland, Fontana. Anyways, yeah. 909. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> Um, okay, so you said you said you've been on two boats in 25 years. So mm -hmm. what'd you do before you went to your first submarine? Oh man! All right, so let's go down this interesting career path that I have is not very interesting. So my very first duty station was Naval Hospital Cherry Point, which is no longer a hospital. It has been downgraded to a branch clinic of Camp Lejeune. So mm -hmm. if that tells you about where it's at, so the actual one that there's all those lawsuits of? Yeah, that's the one. Okay. <laughs> um, so it's about 40 minute drive from Camp Lejeune. Uh, while it was still a hospital, uh, I was an EMT. I worked in the emergency department uh, after doing some OJT time in the pharmacy. So I spent about three years working ambulance services at the hospital and volunteering out in town with the fire department. Uh, from there, I got orders overseas to Naval Hospital Siganella when it was still considered overseas sea duty, which was pretty dope because that counted as sea duty for me while I was living in Sicily. Mm -hmm. um, and I worked in the ER the entire time I was there. Somebody snagged me up before I could even get there. They saw I had orders, and they're like, hey, I want you to work in the ER. And I worked 24-hour uh, shifts, 12-hour shifts. We kind of shifted around depending on how, how our staffing went. Um, and then from there, um, because I was on sea duty, they wouldn't let me go back-to-back sea -back duty. I tried to go anywhere operational. They're like, sorry, shipmate, you're on sea duty now. You need to go to another MTF. I'm like, dang. So they sent me to Naval Branch Clinic, Albany, Georgia, which is on the western side of the state, closer to the Alabama border. Hmm. Um, 
I hated it there. I'm not going to lie. That place was terrible. Um, it was a very small clinic. Um, just the area itself was very underdeveloped. So it was just a small Marine Corps base. They did logistics stuff, and that's about it. And we were there to deal with them. So while I was there, uh, that's when I decided I want to go IDC. And I was like, listen, um, I need to go operational. So I talked to my senior chief. He's like, cool, don't go surface. I'm like, the, that's what I want to do, though. He's like, no. So he sent me down. Mm-hmm. Well, I, was, I got selected for Blue Jacket of the Year for my clinic. They sent me down to the hospital to do a board. He said, when you get down there, talk to Master Chief Ed K. I'm like, uh, okay. So that guy... Hey, you want to be independent? I'm like, well, yeah. Do you want to go operational? Well, yeah. Do you want to work your own hours? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> then go submarines. I'm like, oh, dang. He's like, there's a 75% chance you'll go back to a hospital if you go surface. I'm like, well, I don't want to do that. And that was pretty much what put me to go submarines was Master Chief Ed K. Not going back to a hospital. Not going back to <laughs> a fourth hospital from uh, doing three clinics and or hospitals in a row. So you were getting, uh, while you were in your in Sicily, right, you said? Mm-hmm. Oh, you were getting like Oconus Bay or whatever? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <clears throat> I had gotten married uh, to my wife about a ye- my first year while I was there. So I had met her before I went to Sicily, mm. and uh, we decided to get married like two months after I got there. So how long are you guys yeah. married now? 23 years. 23 Man. years. Any chance 20, you served during Latin? 21 years. I'm sorry. 21. 21 years. 21. Get that right. Yeah, 21 years. Did you serve Camp Lejeune between 1953 and 1987? <laughs> no. <laughs> you are not eligible for this yeah, class action I'm lawsuit. I'm not eligible for the class action lawsuit. <laughs> I looked it up. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, so, you know, from there I went operate. I went to uh, Subburn, Submarine IDC School up in Groton. Um, I was there for a while. I got it kind of a... A prolonged visit there, meaning uh, just like in high school, I did not do the things I was supposed to to get to where I needed to be and finish the course on time. I never left anywhere on time, high school, any of my duty stations. It's about where I'm living at right now. Nothing yeah. is left on time. <clears throat> um, yeah, same with the Navy. Not left on time. Right. <laughs> 25 years. <laughs> right. <laughs> exactly. Um, so <clears throat> I finished the school, and that's when I went to the USS Santa Fe when it was uh, still in Pearl Harbor. And I had a blast whenever we were not busy. (laughs) It's understandable. So uh, I'll tell you, being an IDC on a fast boat is awesome and terrible all at the same time. Uh, The underway time, easy day. Pulling to foreign ports, some days are got some stuff to do. But, man, being in home port, uh, busy. Mm -hmm. I was working 12, 13-hour days because we don't get an off-crew cycle. So... Mm -hmm herding cats every day hey man you got to get your physical done Whoa, what the, the, no today you have an appointment I, uh, i'm on duty what the hell? get a, get a relief <laughs> yeah <laughs> and it's not like uh you know here in king's bay where you're driving 20 minutes to go back to the off-crew building or to the clinic uh no you walk across the parking lot and that's where the UMO was that was going to do the exams anyway. I'm like, why? Are, mm. Why are you fighting me? Like, I can see his office. Right there's his window. You know, <laughs> oh, you know, I got duty. God, uh, I'm sure that was probably the most aggravating part of the job. Yes, like okay. I said, going to foreign ports, <laughs> best part of everything. Um, thoroughly enjoyed it. Um, I didn't think I was going to be able to do some of that stuff based on what I was doing already in my career only going to Sicily and then coming back to like these backwoods clinics and mm-hmm. <laughs> and stuff. It just kind of like, well, I ain't going nowhere. Dang. And that's kind of why I wanted to go operational to begin with. Wanted to push to get into that other set of uh, roles that I wasn't doing before. Mm-hmm. So what ports did you go to? <laughs> oh man. Uh, we went to Chinhe, Korea, which was pretty dope. Other than the fact that it was cold as hell. Cause it was uh, in the middle of March and leaving Pearl Harbor, where it was nice 78, 80 degrees every day to 40 degrees was not fun. Um, we actually happened to be there over St. Patrick's Day. We found the only Irish bar in the entire area, <laughs> and we got smashed. Not the point. Smashed. Uh, Chinhe, Korea. We went to Yakuska a bunch. Uh, my first Westpac, we went to Sasebo, I think, three, four times. Um been to Guam a whole bunch of times. Um, 
and uh, Singapore. What has been your favorite port? Mm. Um, and then follow up with that, why? Like, fun story. Oh, wait, we happened. went to the Philippines, too. I forgot. We went to mm. Subic Bay. Uh, my favorite was Singapore. I actually loved it there. It was beautiful, clean. Um, I messed up and didn't get a custom-made suit like half my sonar division did. But then they didn't have anywhere to put it on the boat, so mm-hmm. they had to figure it out because fast boat don't got no room. Right. And <clears throat> they had custom-made suits made for cheap. Um, let's see. What was the other part of your question? Oh, it was like, why did you enjoy that port so much? Why was that one your favorite? Uh, I mean, like I said, it was just a beautiful area. Mm-hmm. Um, and they spoke English. Well, well. <laughs> <laughs> so no communication barrier, clean. Oh, yeah. Okay. Uh, any, any like, fun stories from any of your ports? All right. So I lost my yeoman in the Philippines. <laughs> what? I lost my yeoman in the Philippines. <laughs> All right, go on. All right, so <laughs> we're, in the, we're in the Philippines, and you had to have your liberty buddy to go out. Couldn't mm-hmm. go out by yourself. So Stand myself, up. yep, and I won't use any names on this one. Nope. So my sure. YNC, I was still first class. My YNC, my FTC, and my STSC. No, RMC. The four of us went out, and YNC is like, I don't drink. We're like, well, that's too bad because you're drinking today. And, well, all right, I'll have one. I mean, one turned to like four, sure. five. And we took them back to the, we went back to the hotel after mm-hmm. that. And uh, I was done. I had had quite a few. And I go to my room, and probably about 20 minutes later, I get a phone call to my hotel room. I'm like, what the hell? Who's calling me now? It was my FTC. I'm like, what? Hey, you need to come get the yeoman. Why? He's in my room. So? I'm busy. Oh. Okay. So he had gotten a companion. We go up there, and uh, I find the yeoman, or I knock on the door. Door's open. Go in, and I find the yeoman laying on the bathroom counter. Mind you, my YNC was 5'3", 5'2", so he's not a very tall man. I was like, hey, we got to go. He's like, I'm sleeping. I'm like, this is not your bed. This is my room. This is not your bed. All right. So he gets up and goes into the closet and shuts the door. I'm mm-hmm. like, well, whatever. He's occupied. So he was gone. I get up the next morning, calling the YNC. No answer. I'm like, uh-oh. So I go to his door. No answer. Call the FTC. Hey, man, have you seen the yeoman? Nope. Crap. So I start looking all over this hotel, trying to find him. I get down to the bar area, and I see the captain and the cob down there still hanging out. They'd been there all night. And they see me come down frustrated. I'm like, oh, hey, hey, hey sir, cop, what's up? They're like, what you looking for? Noth- nothing. <laughs> nothing. <laughs> we think you're looking for something. Maybe. Are you looking for a small yeoman? <laughs> <laughs> Maybe. Did you look behind that couch? And I looked behind the couch, and there, there he was, he curled up in a little ball. Hey, yeoman, huh? You got to go to your room, man. Oh, where are we at? I'm like, you in the bar. <laughs> oh, all right. And you are no longer my liberty buddy. <laughs> I'm never hanging out with you again, and I refuse to go out with him after that. Jeez. Doc, do you want to go out? <laughs> nope. Nope. Find somebody else, man. <laughs> People call them battle buddies. I've chosen to, to start calling them sidekick squids. Nice. Right? Um... So, who was your sidekick squid at that point in time, after the after you refused to go out with the yeoman? Oh, that was my with? FTC. Okay. Yeah, and then I learned that he he was a bad influence. <laughs> um, he didn't stay my my sidekick squid for for too long. It ended up being one of the A gangers after that. Um, yeah, FTC was he was single. A single and liked to mingle, huh? Yeah. All right. Yeah. <laughs> Enough said. Yep. Doc, let's... No. No. No, you about to get me divorced, bro. That ain't gonna happen. <laughs> That's fair. All right, so uh, what's the most interesting story medical-wise that you're willing to share that you experienced in the Navy? Oh. All right, so like I said, I was an EMT for some years before I went submarines. Um, submarine-wise... Um, Oh, let's see. We can talk about the time when we were leaving the Philippines. The Philippines was not, I mean, it was a great place to visit. It caused me a lot of problems, though. I'm not going to lie. 
um, where I had uh, one department head, one JO, and three junior sailors all racked out uh, as we were trying to finish up a tour for the Singapore Navy and leave the country. Um, yeah, there was a lot of, uh, hey, don't drink the water. Please don't drink the water when we, before we pulled in. No, 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 we won't drink the water. So the morning of casting off lines, I got, like I said, five or six people just puking everywhere. I'm like, what the hell is going on? So it's literally don't drink the water. Literally, literally don't okay. drink the right. water. Yeah. Making sure it doesn't stand for something. Okay, no, right. don't drink the water. <laughs> like bottled water, good to go. Okay. Don't drink the water. So as I said, I got five or six people puking two JOs. Like I said, one was department head, junior officer, and then the rest were all... Uh, I won't say what department because it'll lead to whatever. <laughs> but yes, that department went out and did their thing. And um, so I'm sitting there talking to the department. And I'm like, what the hell did you guys do last night? Doc, we just went out. Drank the water. <laughs> <laughs> so close. <laughs> What'd you guys do? We went out drinking. Yeah, I can see that. What'd you have? We just had drinks. Okay, did you drink any of the water? The ice. It was the ice. Oh, yeah. They had margaritas. <laughs> yeah. Help. And uh, I was like, what'd you drink? We just had tequila. I'm like, mixed in what? And they're like, margarita mix. I'm like, mm. there it is. Did you use ice in the margaritas? Like crushed ice or ground ice? And he's like, yeah. Oh. No. <laughs> yeah, buddy. Uh, you're going to be sick for a little bit. And uh, yeah, we had to, we put the two officers in one of the J.O. state rooms because they only held three Kept them in there with a couple trash cans. The junior sailors, we sent them to their racks while we're doing a tour of the Philippine Navy. And you see, <laughs> in the background, I'm like, oh, my God. Lord of mercy. Yeah, the captain's like, what do we do? I'm like, um, let it run its course. <laughs> it's, 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 yeah. I was like, I can give them something to stop it, but yeah. So, yeah. Thank you, by the way, for getting me through my gallbladder issues. Oh, my God. There was that, too. <laughs> oh, Lord. I forgot about Lord. that. I'm still mad at you that you didn't get me off the boat at an L- appropriate time. Listen. <laughs> it's not his fault. All right. So it, it was not. So we'll talk about that. So we had a sailor, prior to you having your issue, have some weird neurological thing happen. Um, I had a UMO on board. And because the way it presented out it was not super concerning for me, thinking it was a stroke. Because the way it was showing off, it kind of looked like it at first. So we send this message. And we get a reply back. Get him off the boat. All right. So the UMO goes with him. And then this guy, like right after we do that transfer, my stomach hurts. I'm like, what's wrong with you? My stomach hurts. I think I have gallstones. You don't have gallstones. And then he pulled his record. And what was in there? Gallstones. Uh, hospitalized for Godstone in Hawaii. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that I didn't see prior to. Yeah. That's not the point. But anyway, so we we try to send the message, and what'd they say? You're pulling in in like two days anyways, something like that. Yep. Yeah. Hold on to them. You're pulling in in two days. Okay, man. I'm going to keep you comfortable as best we can. The day before we're supposed to pull in, Captain gets on the one seat. Hey, <laughs> crew, sorry. We're going to be out another two days. We're like, what the hell? So, hey, man, I got to keep you on board two more days. All right. The next day, hey, they're going to keep us out two more days. We got extended out another week. Yikes. Day by day because of whatever happened. And I had to keep him just, I'm sorry, man. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I think it was 12 days total. Yeah. Jesus. Um, we pulled in on a Saturday. So we went to the emergency room, mm-hmm. got out by sun- Sunday, 3 in the morning. And I was in surgery by Wednesday. Mm-hmm. My point is how fat, when does the Navy move that fast? And that was at the Navy hospital. Yeah. Sunday by Wednesday, experts are seeing me the next day. They gave me some good stuff. So that was. The only was reason the they waited too was because you ate. <laughs> Remember? Yeah. What? Yeah. Yeah. Because yeah, yeah. you ate. You can't do the surgery that quickly. So they had to wait 12 hours and then it just, it was still quick enough. But yeah. So the other, Fuck. this is hilarious. So does the captain need signature? Do you need signature permission from your captain? To get a major surgery? Technically, yes. Technically, okay. They were trying to delay my surgery in the morning of Wednesday. He kept, he kept calling me. I was like, just, I don't care. <laughs> Give it to then, me. I'll sign it. <laughs> and then uh, Danny Brown finally gets hold of 
pa- Captain Paisan, mm-hmm. and I heard him. He's like, "Does he need the surgery? Then fucking do it." Yeah. <laughs> to some corpsman, I was like, "Yeah, uh, yeah you're getting your surgery now." Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Because they were trying to send him all the way back up from the Naval Hospital in Jacksonville just for a signature. Jesus Christ. Yeah. yeah. And I'm sitting there telling him, just do the surgery. Just and they're like, we it. need somebody to do permission. Like, I'm his provider. Just do the damn surgery. Yeah. And then that Lord. was the PRT cycle before COVID. Yeah. So I missed that one. Yep. That one. All of COVID. <laughs> so by the time. <laughs> lucky I missed all of that. So by the time, it was like, I'm going to fail this. I haven't done <laughs> <laughs> this in years. <laughs> So, but, just oh, did the PRT damn. passed again. Nice, nice. But yeah, that was that was a rough two and a half weeks of just trying to deal with the other guy and then getting you. <clears throat> and it was, hey man, here's a little bit. I can give you a little bit more, a little bit more. Can I stand watch? No. Okay. <laughs> and he would just sit in the lounge, just sad face, and everybody's like, "Is he gonna make it? I don't know." I need mean, right. <laughs> well, I won't mention who, but our senior chief at the time. Yeah. Finally's like. Do you mind just sitting in sonar doing nothing? It's like I'm sure. Yeah, he's just, <laughs> yeah, in, uncomfortable yeah. and in pain. Oh. Damn, well, I feel much I'm better sorry. now though. Getting that removed, I, I should have. I think I prolonged it by a year or two, whatever it was. Right? Yeah. I'll just eat right, eat right, and you can control it. Mm-hmm. it but it gets to the point where you just drink water. Yeah, and then there's nothing you can do at a certain point. Yeah, they should have. They should have done that when you were still in Hawaii. Well, I was on vacation in Hawaii. You know what I mean? Yeah, it, it should and, have been handled right after. You know what would be set or Washington State? Well, oh, yeah. just do it over there. Yeah, because we'll delay your orders, and I wanted to come. And anyways, yeah, yeah it turned into a problem. <laughs> In the long run, yeah. everything worked out. Yes, it did. Everything worked out because I got the orders here, and that was the test that I took underway that I made first class. It is. So, <laughs> so, so it's always like so if it did I work out. It was like, done this. Yeah. You know, it was all timing. It timed out just right. Yeah. Yeah. Wasn't even upset about it. No. Just a miserable time. <laughs> Those two weeks, man. And I remember when uh, uh, Dustin Miles called me the day of the surgery because they don't even keep him in the hospital. No, it was, I'm like, it was I'm quick. Be, yeah, they, you're out. What? It's the same day. It's like, you're bleeding. Oh, by the way, if you start bleeding out of your belly button, it's normal. I go mm-hmm. take a shower. Guess what happens? <laughs> All this stuff just comes out right there. And then he calls oh, me. He's like, how are you feeling? And he's, like, he's like, oh, you sound like shit. And in fact, he just had his gallbladder removed a couple days he ago. Did. <laughs> so, this guys. guy doesn't send me a picture of his gallstones, too. You remember that? Jeez. Yeah. How big were they compared oh, to Oh, man. So the specimen canister is about that big. And it was full. Just massive rocks jesus i'm like did you pick these up out of the yard no (laughs) these are out of my guts so i'm texting everybody hey you you imagine you're just like yeah let me take this one right here this looks good (laughs) so i'm texting everybody hey you want to see the picture no hey you want to see no hey you want to see absolutely Absolutely. (laughs) (laughs) send it please finally one person jeez oh man good times oh yeah that's uh that's that's a good one yeah that's a good one i completely forgot all about that man Shit, you yeah. were on board, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, he, he, that was his first run. Yeah. No, that was – I showed up, what, right after that because y'all went to dry dock. Oh, we did. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And then the, the sonar system replacement, all that jazz. Yeah. That was dumb. I showed up right after that. Mm-hmm. But I remember <laughs> I remember him telling me about it. Now that y'all, now that y'all brought it up, yeah, I remember. And he was talking about just how bad it was. <clears throat> oh, he wild. looked like death. He'd be walking down the hallway just – I'm like, you all right? <laughs> Oh. I look like how you doing that camera yeah, right 100%. here. Yeah, hundred percent. Yep. Anybody, uh, anybody ask if you go put your sheets back on your rack? <laughs> uh, all right, uh, wait, what's your favorite meal? Underway. Oh, beanies and weenies every day. Beanies really? Weenies. I love beanies and weenies. Okay. I'm not even gonna lie. Least so, favorite hamsters. So people make fun of me for saying I enjoy cold cuts. I hate cold cuts underway. Reason I enjoy it so much is. Reality, it's hard for them to mess it up. True. It's until you, really hard until you for them to forget mess it up. that they forgot to take it out of the freeze box. <laughs> yep. And now you're eating That's a super cold cut. Yeah. <laughs> and you're, An ice cut, if you will. Yeah, you're cutting your mouth on the meat that's frozen in there. Yeah. Yeah, no. I can see that one. I can see that being a, a big down check on that one. Because yeah. you own the CS. Am I wrong? Are you the chief? So Department the, chief. the last patrol I was, because they ran out of, remember, uh, Chief Hag left. Mm-hmm. That was their only chief left in supply. Um, oh, it was. It was. So I took over as department chief on my last run until uh, Brown and Paredes 
got pinned because remember they got mm-hmm. selected at yep. the same time. Yeah, I remember that. Okay, right as we left. Mm-hmm. So uh, yeah, I covered down with them until then. Um, but no, uh, they put me in charge of the executive department, which was uh, a whole three other people. Second. Yeah, it was the yeoman and the three MC. Um, which was fine. <laughs> I one, I would one rather had, not uh, have, not have done any of that, but you know. Wasn't that when we had three and one? It was three and it one. It was three and one. <laughs> three and one was the reason I was still there for that last uh, ship's inspection. Really? The CRE. Damn. Yeah, that's why I didn't leave on time. Damn. It was because I was keeping well, him look, from... didn't leave on time. <laughs> See, I don't, I've never left anywhere on time. Um, yeah, I, I stayed to make sure that he did not insert foot into mouth in that's front fair. of the inspectors. <laughs> And That's fair. To keep him from breaking down in front of the inspectors. So yeah. I did that as a favor to, to the captain and, and, and the cob because they're like, can you please? All right, fine. I was like, listen, I just have to be out of here by this date because uh, uh, my sister was getting married. Mm-hmm. And, uh, uh, and you guys know my dad had passed away dur- yep, dur- I remember in that. 2019, 2020, mm-hmm. beginning of 2020. Right after, right after the shots were authorized for COVID, like the following month, he passed away. So I went home to walk my sister down the aisle, and I told the command, I was like, I am not missing any of this. I was like, you guys have helped me out. I've done everything I've needed to help you be successful in X, Y, Z. And the captain said, you know what? We'll do it. So then, you know, came down to, hey, can you stay for CRE? I'm like, <laughs> y'all are asking for a lot, but you know what? Sure, I will stay as long as I'm gone by this date. Mm -hmm. Got it. And it was to help the 3MC make sure that he did not stumble on himself. And uh, I think based on the scores that we got, I think we did pretty well. Mm -hmm. So, And to be a senior drill monitor, (laughs) as much as I love being a drill monitor. That was so much fun. all love being drill monitors. So So when did you make chief? 2013. 2013. Yeah. Okay, so you're you're at eleven years now, mm-hmm. senior chief. Okay, when'd you pick up senior chief? Never, never. I thought you had made senior chief recently. <laughs> okay, I, I'm that fucked was up. Awkward. Yeah. <laughs> I'm I've fucked up. listen. I, was, I, I thought I was sure. <laughs> listen, all right. So I'll be honest. I got to a point after a couple years sure. where I stopped really pushing for myself, mm-hmm. but to make sure that my sailors and the crews were taken care of. So I would spend more time taking care of you guys mm. and, you know, figuring out more about what's going on with you guys than I was doing, you know, um, uh, Senior Leadership Academy or anything like that. I, no. I would rather make sure everybody was taken care of and then, if I had time, worry about my own stuff. So, <clears throat> yeah, that and I kind of pissed off people here and there. Oh, <laughs> there it is. <laughs> yeah. I, I could have my... sworn you had made Senior Chief, man. Mm-mm. All right, well. So, um, heard there's a retirement around the corner. Do you oh, have the date yeah. set already? 25 October, which is actually, it works because that is the uh, 25th anniversary of when I left home uh, to go to San Diego to stay at that uh, hotel overnight to fly out. Hmm. So, 25 years to the day. Oh, congratulations on that one. Yeah. Uh, sounds like it's been a hell of a journey. <laughs> <laughs> it's been real. It's been fun. It ain't been real fun. <laughs> yeah, like I said, some of it has been, it's been fun, but mm. uh, there have been a few times where I just, screw this place, I want to leave. <laughs> yeah. Um, I think we've all been there at one point. <laughs> right. <laughs> In varying situations, of course. Well, I mean, you guys remember when we went through the COVID bout on the boat, mm. when you were stuck on the boat for, what, five days? Because I couldn't get relieved? Yes, yes. Because we, I... we had to, we had to, I had to rom 100 people off the crew. I was borrowing missile techs and electricians from other boats to to protect the assets because we just didn't have the bodies anymore. Mm-hmm. And I was working. I would get up at 4 o'clock in the morning, uh, start prepping the stuff for the day, be at the clinic at 5.45 to test because we were testing every day that time. Yep. Finish up, send guys home, uh, start documenting everything that we did that day get kicked out of the clinic at five because they didn't keep let us stay go home eat real quick and then i would make all my follow-up calls to everybody that was rommed 
just to make sure that they were still alive and or mm-hmm. not getting worse. So I didn't get to bed till around midnight. And Jesus. that was just working straight for two and a half, three weeks. Yeah. Lord of mercy, man. And then by the end of that, I was like, I'm done. Screw you guys. Don't ask me for nothing. <laughs> yeah. And then I would still do whatever. <clears throat> the only thing I got was you, well, not you, but you guys placed me on ROM for two weeks because I got contact yeah. traced <laughs> by somebody. It was like, hey, somebody put you down. I'm like, thank you. That's why I didn't go on that ride. <laughs> yeah. When oh, Dallas Jack, yeah, yeah, yeah. because he, he close contact me. So I got freaking put on for that one. So yeah, I missed I missed that ride. I could have got qualified in our suit way earlier. But no, I'm okay with that though. I was able to stay on my family for a little bit longer. And it was funny because when we did all that, when I had to isolate, you know, most of the crew, there was only like two officers. One was the captain, and one was one of the JOs that didn't get caught up in everything. And then three chiefs. It was the three MC at the time, uh, the A gang chief, and myself. So we were the ones that were having to move all the pieces with the captain's you know oversight and we're like oh, no, what we're doing hmm. Cobb's gone ANAV's gone like our other stellar leader and all the department heads are gone we're like oh man we're gonna have to figure this out so we were all right sorry guys you got to stay on the boat for like four more days <laughs> no no <laughs> it was one day at a time yeah it was two days there was two days and it then we had to days. add another day I know days. because <laughs> <laughs> the senior section leader off the boat, mm-hmm. Dustin Miles. Yep. Off the boat. Yep. Dan Bello, boom. You're my new senior section leader. Yep. Just because I was the last man. <laughs> <laughs> it's then, pretty much yeah. what it came down yeah. to. <laughs> and I kept Dang. that since I left in 2024. Forever, yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. Well, it's funny because that's kind of how I took the watch bill too, the underway watch bill. My first patrol, I was just sitting there watching the supply chief who had it just lose his mind he was trying to stand watch and then make all these changes constantly i'm like that's dumb why is he doing that i don't do nothing i'll take the watch bill for now and then it ended up being mine until i left yeah and uh during that covid run when i would get into arguments with people they're like hey i need to move this guy off the decks and blah 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 i'm like well you can't why because i have exactly the right amount of people to fill this watch bill like nobody's got kicks anywhere we're we're maxed out with or we're at the bare minimum of what we can have. And, well, what am I supposed to do? I don't know. Figure it out. It's not my problem. <laughs> do what submariners do best. Figure it the yeah. fuck out. <laughs> he can do it on his off going time. Not my problem. It'll buff. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So uh, as you're getting ready to retire, mm-hmm. what do you think you're going to miss the most? Uh, all right. So I guess uh, I would say the camaraderie. But even though it's social media and all that, it's still there. Um Getting underway sometimes, having the the feeling of just being away from the troubles that are here, you know, sometimes hanging out, underway, that stuff. Uh, some of the meals underway, like I said, beanies and weenies. I don't, I don't know what they do. They're magical underway. It's just something different, you know. Things like that are what I'm going to miss. What am I not going to miss? These 3 o'clock in the morning phone calls of, <laughs> Doc, I threw up. Great. How many times? Just once. Click. <laughs> I ain't dealing with that. So, I got a call, South Carolina, mm-hmm. duty chief. There's a snake in the field. Yep. Okay. Is it near the barracks? No. It's in the field? Yeah. Let me know when it goes near the barracks, and then we'll start doing something about it. Yeah. You want me? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Like I said, I would get random. When I was, oh, my first boat was the worst. Um, I would get a random phone call, 2, 3 o'clock in the morning. Doc, I threw up. How many times? Once. Was there blood in there? No. And I would just hang up. <laughs> Eventually, they're like, hey, you want me to come back at sick call? Yeah, dude, come see me in the morning. Why are you calling me for one episode of puking? You're dumb. Don't do that again. <laughs> <laughs> People are, I mean, you know, in the moment, they freak out. Oh, my God. Yeah. So, and, uh, sure. So, get it. One of the things that I, I would try to push, you know, all the time is learn how to take care of yourself, too. Right? Because yeah. a lot of guys that we get don't know how to take care of themselves they got a stomach ache what's the first thing they're gonna do call they're, you they're gonna call me but like my stomach hurts great D- did you take anything uh no i wanted you to tell me you tell me what uh, how to be an adult <laughs> that's what, what i'm not gonna want to make sure i don't get in trouble for taking something yeah i'm not gonna miss telling people how to adult i'll tell you I'll, that right now i'll be honest with you i'll oh oh gosh i feel like shit babe well you're gonna call or text your doc 
<laughs> I straight up have told her, no. She's like, do you need to go hot? No. <laughs> Just give me 10 minutes. Let me rest. Yeah, sometimes he's got to wait it out. <laughs> you know. And then if I'm not, if I'm still not feeling good, and you know, hours later, sure, I'll, I'll give a text or a phone call. Yeah. But once or twice, like back to back, okay, sure. And you would always get the follow-up question, how many times? Yeah. That's, yeah. Because if it's more than a few times, mm. then we're going to do something about it. Once? Right. Get over it. <laughs> so, but, well, we appreciate uh, having you having you here. You oh, yeah. see stories, all that jazz. Um, so, one last thing we want is uh, if you had any piece of advice for, like, someone that's new coming in or just came in, mm-hmm. right, someone that's thinking about coming in, what would that piece of advice be? Don't be afraid of new things. Don't be afraid to get to know people that are, like, so for the boat, you know, outside of your division right because that knowing the other divisions and knowing them at a personal level it helps overall with the, one the morale and two if something were to happen you get that your spidey senses tingle before anybody else notices and you can help that person uh potentially prevent something from uh adverse happening you know um that was why one of the times i would always talk to you guys on the boat all the time I knew so much about you guys. You guys didn't even know how much I knew. The Cobb and I used to play right. games of who knew each other better or who knew the sailors better. And it, it worked. Um, he'll tell you, like, the first couple of years I was on board, we were on board. How many mental health cases do we have? See, I don't remember None. Many. Okay. None. Okay. Until we had... COVID is going to kind of went up, right? And then we had the guy that... Okay. Yeah. That was the downfall of everything. Okay. He was our, our catalyst that kind of dipped everything through but he didn't he didn't want to get to know anybody he was in his own little bubble of Hmm. i have my problems i don't need everybody to know about them and that's what kind of was his downfall so when i say get to know others and just don't be afraid it's it's key and it'll it'll help you get farther along a lot quicker thank you for being here pleasure serving with you oh yeah We'll see you at the 909. Are you, are, are you going back to the 909? No, I'm going to stay here. Yeah, that's my plan, too. Yeah. And uh, thank you. No, thanks. I appreciate yeah. it, guys. In the era of digital media, VHS tapes might seem like relics of the past, but for many, these magnetic tapes hold cherished memories and a slice of history. Whether it's a family vacation from the 90s or a classic home video, the question of how long VHS tapes last is crucial for anyone looking to preserve these memories. The general consensus among experts is that a VHS tape can last anywhere from 10 to 30 years. However, this lifespan is not set in stone and can vary significantly based on how the tape is stored how often it's played, and the quality of the tape itself. Some tapes, particularly those stored under ideal conditions, may last even longer, while others could degrade much sooner. Given the finite lifespan of VHS tapes, one of the best ways to preserve your content is to digitize it. This process involves transferring the video from the VHS tape to a digital format, such as a DVD or MP4 file. Not only does this safeguard against physical degradation, but it also makes it easier to share and enjoy your content in the digital age. At AmericanVHSTransfers.com, we can transfer all your VHS tapes as well as 8mm films and any other older format. Now with two locations in Kingsland, Georgia and Goose Creek, South Carolina.